I wanted to share with you an approach for animating a vehicle for linear animation. Uh, it's going to build on a fellow Epic Solution Architect, Stephen Phillips, uh, dev post. You can find it by searching for follow spline in the uh, search. And you know, this post goes through all of the steps that he did to make these blueprints. And I found it to be a really great starting point for using for your vehicle animation. But what we're going to do today is take that and then extend it to work with Take Recorder and to um, have a very flexible way to, to build a car animation. So, so once you download this project, you'll see from the, uh, the Dev Community Hub, you'll, you'll see some spline examples with cars and people and boxes. We're just going to focus on the car today. In fact, we're just going to break open a brand new scene. Uh, recent levels. And all we have in it is just a target spline blueprint. Uh, this is just a blueprint that has only a spline path in it. I pre-did this in a default level. And we're going to find the default car because we're just going to go through step by step. So here's the spark car, sports car pawn, right? So because he made this as a actor component, you can just drop this sports car pawn right into the scene. And if you add a component and look for a follow spline component, it'll attach. Now you can choose the spline. There's only one in there, but it could also automatically find it for you. And uh, you can say, you know, throttle, one maximum throttle. Tell it to look ahead, I don't know, maybe 500 units. And if you just do this, out of the box, this car, hit play, will find this blind, and it will follow along. So this is a great start uh, to see what you're looking at. But you don't have a lot of control over it if you just did this. So... Uh, if we wanted this to, to be uh, more predictable and also an animation we could scrub, we need to do a few things. Let me stop this. There are two main changes I did to the scene to help me animate. Uh, the first is I added a break variable that I exposed to cinematics. And this will allow me to have access to this in the sequencer, right? And uh, uh, I disconnected all the hookups because I'm not going to actually drive this car. And on event tick, I get the vehicle moving component and I set the brake input from the brake. And this will just allow me to apply the brakes from the level sequence whenever I need to. And then the other thing I did on the follow spline component, there is a, a speed property here and that uh, tells the car how fast you want it to go the speeder here to throttle and I also expose that to cinematics again because I want the car to stop and start controlled by the level sequence not just playing it in the game in the engine and hitting a record with a tape recorder so with those two things applied we can create a new level sequence I'll just call this car demo 2 because car demo 1 is already taken um, and what we want to do is we want to add this car into our level sequence. Add sports car upon. Uh, d dial down into the follow uh, is it vehicle. Where's the follow? There it is. Follow spline. And here we have speed. So we added this. This would not have been available for. So at, at frame zero, if we just key this at zero and we have this level sequence auto play. If we go to simulate now, notice this time the car doesn't move. It just it just waits. Oh, it did move. Why did it move? So let's extend the sequence to 555. And just to show you that this car is actually being driven by the spline, I can create some uh, obstacles and uh, because I want this car to stop 
eventually I can add the break channel that is here uh, go to I don't know frame 180 and we'll key 0 uh, and frame 194 we'll set the brakes on fully and as long as you don't have autoplay for your level sequence okay when you go to 0 it's going to read the speed value so you hit start and the car is just going to wait right and so now it's simulating but it's reading this single frame 0 over and over again so we can hit play in the sequencer and now it's going to do its thing and it's, it's you'll see here it hits the, the brakes or the ramp and it hits the brakes right so then we can know this endpoint if you're trying to uh, play with uh, camera angles or uh, um, different ideas you need to stop it goes back to zero go to the beginning hit play so you get ready and then you can play it again so we can experiment with very repeatable animations okay <laughs> and um, maybe we want that to wait a little longer before it hits the brakes oh there you go yeah see so it's it's live getting you know feedback from this sequence here so uh, let's stop this go back to zero now if we were to open up the take recorder we could take this car, sports car, drag it in here, and you can see all the properties. Uh, the, the thing to keep in mind, if you want the transforms to be on the car channel, you, you leave this ticked. If you want them to be in the on the actual bones, the skeletal mesh, if you wanted to export that, you turn that off. So right now I want to put it all in the skeleton so you can see the animation. But um, we can actually use this to do a take record and so we start it uh, and that shouldn't have worked damn it so if we go to the car demo level sequence turn on autoplay and then include it as a source for the take recorder we have to remove it from the scene so when we have play it doesn't auto play but now the car is waiting in the sequencer when we hit record it's going to trigger that play and then we have a, the exact sequence there we go stop it Here we created, open this up here. Now we have a, a very repeatable animation sequence that started exactly at frame zero. And then you just basically have an animated sequence that you could use into it as any animated sequence, skeletal mesh, uh, for assembling. If you needed to make the change and regenerate this mesh, in this animation you can always go back to your original uh, level sequence adjust the spline adjust the, the, the curves for when you hit break and uh, but it's a very repeatable way to make something that you would have a hard time animating by hand but you'd also probably have a hard time driving it and controlling it by hand as well so uh, for a lot of productions uh, that I think this will fulfill that spot in the middle. So good luck. Hope it helps.